are places with bright, shiny faces. It's so good to see new chins. Chins that have been in hiding for two years. And for those of us who are still more comfortable wearing masks, it's great to see your bright eyes. And for those of you who are still joining us online, it is very good to know that you are there that by the power of the Holy Spirit we are together even when we're not in the same room. You are welcome here today as we slip in out of the rain and the gray and the wind and the cold and gather around the warm bright spirit of the living God in our midst. You are welcome here no matter who you are no matter where you are on your journey, this is a place where the welcome mat is extended to you, um, where God has said, come in, let us commune together. So let us indeed worship the Lord together.
It's good to see a few new faces out there and a lot of new chins. Um, join me in the call to worship. As the, and as the father, as the mother, God is eager to hold the children. As the maker and sustainer, God has named us and claimed us. God in heaven, we on earth, come, we come to be held within, within the power of light. God is speaking to those who will listen. God is healing those who are hurting. God in heaven, we on earth, we come to live within the hallowed law. God is holy and is making all things new. God is faithful and holds all things together. God in heaven, we on earth, we come to be held within the hallowed peace. Let us pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, we gather around your holy name and lift our prayers of praise and wonder. May your name be rightly heard through our prayer and through our lives. May our lives be rightly lived because of your name. May all the world praise your name with us and sing. Amen. And our first hymn of the morning, All Creatures of Our God and Him, is found in hymn number 23 in the green hymnal. And as per our latest instructions, we will sing the first verse. In your mercy. Amen. Amen. And hear the good news of the gospel. That in Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. They have evaporated in the midst of God's mercy. And you are free to be and to live and to bear the image of God. And now as those 
who have received the peace of Christ, I invite you to stand and share that with one another in the face of a stranger. In the greeting of a friend, we see our Lord Jesus Christ. In the love of Christ, welcome those around you today with signs of peace. May the peace of Jesus Christ be and abide with you now and forevermore. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. gentleness that you share with one another. Um, today we are beginning a series on the Lord's Prayer. If you remember learning this prayer as a child, raise your hand. We've been saying this prayer for years, right? Every Sunday when we gather together, we say this prayer. This prayer that Jesus set as an example of how our prayers should be. This prayer that is one of the few prayers that all of Christendom shares together. And yet sometimes we plow through it like we're on the freeway in California. Pshu! And so we're going to pause over the next, well, a couple of months, actually, and, and ponder what it is that Jesus has packed into this extraordinary prayer that seems so simple, so simple that a child can recite it, and yet so deep that a child can be sustained through it. Um, we're going to be looking primarily at the prayer in Matthew's Gospel, um, Luke also records this prayer. Um, it's a slightly different context and a shorter version. So we're going to walk through this with Matthew today. And um, it wasn't planned that on Mother's Day we would begin with our Father. <laughs> but here we are. Matthew records this prayer. In his gospel, it's part of what we would call the Sermon on the Mount. Um, it's the recording of a very long day of teaching, actually. It's the longest discord of Jesus' teaching in all of the gospels. And it's where Jesus goes on the mountain and sits down and the crowds are gathered. And he begins to teach the basics, the 101 of what it means to follow him, what Jesus is about. And so if you would imagine sitting out on a hillside in Palestine, slightly different environment, your bodies are warmed by the sun, imagine that. Imagine flies buzzing around but you don't care. Imagine dust on your cheeks but you don't care. You don't care because maybe these words of such profound truth are settling over your soul. Maybe your soul as your skin has been warmed such that your heart and your mind is pliable to the words that Jesus speaks. Holy God, we have come pliable before you, listening to your word. And we pray that we would not hear simply the words that are spoken, but the truth that is proclaimed. Amen. And Jesus said, This is how you are to pray. 
Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not subject us to the final test, but deliver us from the evil one. May God bless the reading of this holy word. I'm sorry that for those folks in the back you can't see it very well, and kudos for those brave enough to sit in the front pews. Um, but this picture that's on the communion table normally hangs in the stairwell in my home. In this frame are the pictures of the mothers of my lineage. The farthest to the right is my great, great, great grandmother, Catherine Lally. And then just to the left of her is my great, great grandmother, her daughter, Bridget O'Mara Kelly. Yes, I'm Irish. <laughs> the two of them boarded a boat from Ireland bound for America. And these are their descendants, my mothers and my mother's mothers. These are my people going back six generations. Now, if you have been to my home and have enjoyed a meal there, you have sat at a wooden table. That family lore says these two women who boarded the boat from Ireland brought with them. They brought that piece of furniture from the home country to the new country. From County Galway came these women and that table some 170 or so years ago. And sometimes when I sit at that table and I'm rubbing my hand on the soft, smooth wood grains, I wonder what conversations have happened around that table? What foods have been served at that table? Do we speak of the same things? Do we partake of the same foods? Beyond these few women and that table, I don't know very much of who I am or who my people are. Some of you probably know more. Some of you maybe go back dozens of generations. Back and back and back to the ages of our people. The people whose stories run through our veins even if we don't know those stories. How far back do you know? Jesus said, Our Father. I can trace myself back to Ireland, to my great, great, great grandmother Lally. Six pictures in my family line. And it is very likely around this table one thing that Catherine Lally and Bridget O'Mara. Kelly and I have each done is say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, I say. Our Noir, they would have said in Gaelic. This prayer links me to them going back at least these six generations. But there's something more powerful that Jesus does when he says, Our Father. He links me back to a family line, traces it back, 
unfolds the family photo album all the way back to the beginning where I find myself in the lap of the creator of the universe. Our Father. Now, I don't think that Jesus uses that title primarily because God is a man like my dad, only bigger. It's not about being a man. It's about a relationship. It's about beginning prayer, tracing ourselves all the way back to the beginning of us all. The one, the progenitor, the genesis of all that I am is what I should have in mind when I start my prayers. That is who I am. One made of, born of God. Except, in this prayer, there is no I. I don't exist in this prayer. Me, mine, doesn't appear anywhere. If you notice, every pronoun in this prayer is in the plural. Even if I am by myself, when I pray this prayer, I am not alone. Our Father. The prayer that Jesus taught us to model our prayers on begins with a relationship with the Creator and in a relationship with one another. We say this to the one who we share in common, who called us all into being and stamped us with the image of God, Imago Dei. We bear the image of God, our Father. Our Father who is in heaven. There's a story, an ancient Roman story, of a Roman emperor returning home from victory, marching in a parade through the streets of Rome. And the streets are lined with cheering crowds of people, hailing the emperor. And the streets are lined with rows of tall legionnaire soldiers, keeping back the people in their places, holding them back, keeping the distance between the people and the emperor because the emperor has power and authority that's different from the people. As the parade passes the platform where the empress and her family sit watching the parade, the emperor's youngest son jumps off the platform burrows between the legs of the people and tries to slip past the legionnaires so he can run out to meet his father's chariot. The legionnaires see him and stop him. You can't do that, they say. Don't you know who is in that chariot? That is the emperor. The little boy looks up confidently and joyfully in the legionnaire's eyes and laughs and says, he may be your emperor, but he's my daddy. Our Father, who art in heaven. This prayer begins with the relationship with our daddy, our Father, but it is our Father who is in heaven. It is not simply um, a gooey, soft, warm relationship. This is God we speak of. And sometimes our prayer, sometimes our religious lives 
become sentimental when all we think of is the love of God. I was raised Catholic and later became Protestant and my mother would say, you know, I, I don't understand, it's probably nice, but I don't understand how Protestants are so friendly, so chummy with God. She retained that Catholic sense of awe and wonder. If we focus just on the love of God, without God's power, it becomes sentimentality. And on the other side, if we focus on God's power and forget God's love, it becomes brutality. And in this prayer, Jesus opens the door for us, sets the first steps of a prayer life. Our Father who is in heaven. Jesus crochets the love and the power together that in God they're in perfect balance. Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name. Holy be. Uh, sometimes we think that by saying holy be your name or when we praise God that somehow us saying that is to make God's name holy. Like we're going to shine it up. We're going to lift it up. We are going to make God's name holy. We like we call the holiness of God's name into being. Hmm. Sometimes I think I'm that powerful. <laughs> Saint Cyril of Alexandra in the 5th century had this to say about that phrase. He said that it is absolutely absurd to think that when we pray, hallowed be thy name, we pray that additional holiness may accrue unto the all-holy God. How can we add holiness to the one who in every respect is perfect, whose essence is holiness? Saint Cyril understood instead the meaning of that phrase, holy be your name, to be something more like, may your name be kept holy in us, in our minds, and in our wills. I mentioned the Amago Dei, the idea that we are stamped with the image of God, we bear God's image. But there's another phrase in Latin, the imitatio Dei, the imitation of God. Jacob Milgram in his book writes, that which humanity is not, nor can ever fully be, but that which humanity is commanded to emulate and approximate. That is what the Bible calls gadosh or holy. To be holy means to imitate God. I remember when Mark and I uh, had not been dating very long, his uncle Henry, who was a farmer, said to Mark about Mark's grandfather, Henry's father, you know, Mark, you remind me of my dad more than anyone else I have ever met. There was something about Mark that just evoked his grandpa's character. He walked around being like his grandfather in the world, even though he didn't know his grandfather very well. 
to be holy, to make God's name holy, to speak God's holy name. We do that by imitating God. John Gammy says it this way, holiness for the nation of Israel, for God's people, was a summons to aspire to the justice and compassionate characteristic of her summoning God. To be God's people means to emulate, to want to be like. In Leviticus 19, and if you want to know about holiness, what, what God expects, I encourage you to read that whole chapter, Leviticus 19, which opens with the phrase, be holy even as I am holy, says your God. Now, we sometimes think that means, oh, God is perfect, and therefore, we must be perfect. But if you follow along the rest of chapter 19 in Leviticus, it doesn't tell you about not making mistakes, never coloring outside of the lines. The rest of chapter 19 talks about the expectation of our behavior, this has a lot to do with justice. This is the chapter in which it says, when you are farming your land, do not pick all the grapes. Don't go back through the vineyard twice to collect the leftover grapes. Leave them. Leave them for the poor to pick. The same thing in your fields. Don't lie. Don't talk smack about your neighbor. Honor your parents. Chapter 19, that begins with, Be holy even as I am holy, says your God, goes on to explain what it means to be a holy people, to be truthful and kind, compassionate and just. Our Father, who is in heaven. Holy be your name. This is the prayer. Jesus says, make your prayers like this, that you do collectively, that you begin in the relationship of God, that you do acknowledging God's power and God's love and that you carry forth by the way that you live your lives imitating God. And that's just the first phrase. Our Father who art in heaven Holy be your name. God, we thank you that Jesus taught us in this prayer and that you are the kind of God that we can pray this prayer to. Thank you that you are the daddy that we can run to the daddy that we are careful about because we want to honor you and acknowledge your power. The source of our being and the sense of our community. Amen. In your bulletin, um, it lists the hymn, The Lord's Prayer, and I would invite you to open your hymn book to number 740. But as many of you who know me know, I don't know squat about music. When I pick out a song, it's because I like the words. And I picked out this one because of the words. But it's very difficult to sing, tell me, tells me the musicians in this congregation. So Mary, um, very graciously, is going to play the tune to um, the Lord's Prayer on her violin. You're invited to open your book and to hum along or to read along, but 
um, we're not going to make you sing it because it's just really hard. <laughs> one thing with you. When we were growing up from the time I can remember, uh, my dad became a pastor and every time we sat down to eat a meal, all of us sat together and we did not touch the food till we said the Lord's Prayer together as a family, every meal for most of my life. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. Um, and printed in your bulletin is a portion of the brief statement of faith. If you, um, if you profess this faith, I invite you to join me in speaking the words about what we believe. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, in sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator, ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. And it is to this God, this God who gives more than is reasonable, more than is necessary, more than can be counted. And as an act of worship, 
we are invited to return to God a portion of those gifts as a, an acknowledgement and a trust in God. So I invite you to bring your tithes, your pledges, your offerings, and this week is also especially, um, there's an envelope in your bulletin if you would like to give a special donation to the Benevolence Fund. And the Benevolence Fund is a special fund that is available for church members and families who find themselves in emergency situations. So it's a way that we express our commitment to take care of one another. You can put your gifts, your offerings in the box in the back of the sanctuary. You can mail them into the church post office box. You can use the online giving on the church website. And you can use every breath you take, every word you speak, every action you do, and make of them an offering to God. God, we lift to you our offerings of one kind and another and pray that you would receive these offerings and receive us, that you would bless these offerings and bless us, that you would use these offerings and use us to bring glory to your name and to build your church, and to redeem your creation. Amen. There are a number of announcements on the back of your bulletin. I invite you to look through those. Just a couple of them I want to point out in particular. One is that um, Bible study, Friday morning Bible study with Dr. Phil Van Bruggen on the book of Isaiah is going to begin this Friday. I know I'm not a reliable witness because I've said that before, <laughs> but I have it on pretty good authority, Dr. Phil himself, that we will begin on this Friday morning. So if you need the Zoom link to join that class, just let Barbara know. Um, also, in the newsletter, the main newsletter, there was an announcement about a new members class taking place. Um, if you would like to join this church or if you joined this church a while ago and you don't remember or you're curious about church membership or what it means to be a Presbyterian or how in the world do you spell that, then this is a class for you. Um, we'll send out more information, but we're kind of at this point just taking a survey how many people would be interested in attending a class like that. So if you have interest in attending a class like that, please let myself or Barbara know um, of your interest, um, if you're comfortable in person or it needs to be Zoom or, and what time frame. Um, so you can send an email or give a verbal or write a note and we'll figure out what to do about that. Um, I think those are all the announcements. I would just give you an update on yesterday's uh, breakfast. Seven, 66 breakfasts were served and 57 people were fed through food given in 27 boxes. Um, so a lot of feeding of bodies and feeding of spirits happening through this congregation. Thank you for supporting that ministry. And now we come to a time during the service when we pray. We together as a community lift up our prayers. What are your prayers this morning? Eric.
We have updated our, no, our George Button donations to include the Saturday breakfast. And in the last month, we have received $250 through the list. And that we will give thanks to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen for technology that is odd and unusual but can be used by the Holy Spirit. So we're very thankful for that. Yes. I, I just, I've had surgery, so on Thursday. It continued very We certainly will be in prayer for you this morning and through the week that this surgery would be a powerful opportunity for God to do a healing and restoration in your body and that you come out the other end stronger, healthier, and that the time of healing would be a time where the Holy Spirit saddles up next to you and accompanies you through the process of regaining strength. Other prayers this morning, Cookie. we join with you in praying for Kenny. Um, many of us have gotten to the point where we feel like COVID is a, a tiny thing of the past, um, but to remember that there are those in the world who are still suffering um, and still at great risk because of this disease. So we lift up prayers for Kenny that his body would be strong and resilient and that he would feel the peace of God. And we will pray this for all those whose health is at risk. Barbara. In Friday's um, newspaper, there were obituaries of two people who attended this church for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Many of you remember Claire Johnson. She and her husband Earl attended faithfully and they sat right up here in the front. Claire passed away a week before her 99th birthday. She um, was a resident at Sierra. And we used to go down there on her birthday and take a cake and, and have a birthday party and for her. her. And at Christmas time, we would go and see Christmas carols for her. And, she and if any of you ever went into her room, she had the most unusual Christmas this tree. Prayer or something else? It was white and feathered, and she put colored What's birds. Do we know what Sherry's praying about? Now, Claire and Earl, when they came to church, Earl would always say, when he was asked to join the church, he would say, all you want out of me is money. <laughs> so I'm not going to become a member. He, he really was a character. They are both um, going, their ashes are going to be buried together in the cemetery in Yohats. Uh, and it does not say when that will be. The other obituary was Alan Laporte. Alan and his wife attended here faithfully, um, oh gosh, years ago. When Charlie and I came here nine years ago, they had already left um, and were attending a, ch a different church. Um, Alan and his wife spent 10 years volunteering for South Lincoln Resources and for Meals on Wheels. In recent years, his health has been declining, but um, he, he was really a friendly, nice guy. And uh, his wife, Linda, they were married for 42 years. 
So please keep both of these families in your prayers. Um, it's nice that we can remember them fondly. Thank you, Barbara, for reminding us of some more of the people that are included when we say, Our Father. And we give thanks to God for the life of the saints who have gone before us and give thanks for the gift of eternal life that they celebrate while we also remember um, those who are left behind and who grieve those lives. Um, from our congregation on Zoom, um, Stella asks us to continue to pray for her friend Joan. A couple of weeks ago, she asked us to pray for Joan, who was going through surgery um, on her knee. And Joan continues to have a great deal of pain, so she asked that we would pray for Joan, that that pain would evaporate, and in its place would come strength and healing. Um, Sherry has asked for prayer on Zoom, prayers for her. And so, Sherry. Actually, uh, Wendy, mm -hmm. it's not for me. It's for a young lady that comes often to get a food box. She and her um, partner were in a bad accident on 20. She lost her partner. She was in the hospital for many days and is back home. She needs prayers for the loss and for joy. Thank you for that clarification, Sherry. And we will indeed remember those that we serve, not only through food, but through spiritual nurture. Um, a woman who was in an accident, whose partner died in that accident, she in the hospital, prayers for her continued healing and comfort after so much. And though it is Mother's Day, and we have such delight in saying, Happy Mother's Day! Um, and we give thanks not only for those women who gave us birth, but those people in our lives who mothered us, who nurtured, protected, supported, while at the same time we hold in tenderness those for whom Mother's Day is painful because of death or discord or loss or disappointment. Shall we go together to God? Holy One, who is our Father, is our Mother. We give you thanks for life, for your love and nurture, and for all those who have loved and nurtured us. And we come to you with prayers, calling on your love and power to be at work in the world. For Joan, and all those who are suffering in pain. For the saints who have gone on before us and the wonder of eternal life that they celebrate, we give you thanks. And we pray for those who sit in sorrow and sadness, looking at the empty chair. May you soften grief. May you hasten healing. And may you plant hope where there is sorrow. We pray for Kenny, for all those, Lord, who are suffering with COVID or illnesses of one kind and another. Pray for strength in his body. Pray that we would continue to be kind and thoughtful, looking out for one another. And Lord, we thank you for uh, the internet. We thank you for the fancy technology that allows us to use a credit card and a computer mouse to build your kingdom. For the money that has come in to support your ministry, we give you thanks and pray that every dollar that is asked for, every dollar that is given, every dollar that is used would become blessed blessed redemption. And now we gather around the prayer that Jesus taught us. Blessed to be able to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is number 21. This is my Father's world. First verse only, yes. We're going to be careful for a few more weeks. There's a special blessing this morning in that Tom brought in a beautiful um, bouquet of roses and has requested that everyone take a rose as they are leaving in memory of the mothering that you have done or that you have received in your life. Thank you, Tom. And now, I charge you to go out into the world to be God's holy people, to imitate the holiness of God in all that you say, in all that you do, in all that you are. And as you do this, take with you this blessing. May the power of God protect you. May the love of Christ warm you. And may the presence of the Holy Spirit heal you from this day into eternity. Amen. <laughs>